Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back for today's uh, Pioneer Deck Tech. We're going again to the Pioneer format. Yes, I'm showing to you guys another upcoming deck project of mine in which I also referenced this from a recent uh, MDGO tournament results. We call this, this one a Boris Agro deck, but I think I've called this uh, version the sort of a Boros uh, Agro with counters. <laughs> have this one edited later on but anyway here's the quick breakdown of the deck since uh, this is more of an aggro deck we have 24 creatures uh four battle with the bishop gubakan four enchantments uh five instants 23 lands and or this of the sideboard which we'll also have to discuss uh, later on so we're going to start with the why it's called the boros counters deck aggro we have some several ways in which we can benefit from it aside from just putting out the uh, uh, counters on creatures you control. So we're going to start with our one drops here. You have Phoenix Chick, just a pseudo attacker in the air, or just a 1 1 4 1 flying haste, in which you can have this one bot back from the graveyard if you control and attacking with three or more creatures and also having a bonus percent percent counter added on it. In the same way, we have uh, two copies of Recruitment Officer. This is just filling up the one drop slot with just a good power and toughness. At the same time, a good mana sink in the late game by looking at the top four cards in the library and revealing a creature card with mana value three or less. So why? Again, we were discussing why it's go with the Samson counters. One of which to have the benefit is this card, which this one is by Agar Givian Recruiter. So it's two to cast two two at the junior end step. If you control a creature with power or greater than its base power you get to create this 1-1 one, one white soldier token so what goes here is that adding these counters which basically having your creatures uh, power greater than its base power which means that the uh, bird will trigger at your beginning of your end step so combining with the creatures that is our next uh, creature in the lineup a luminar aspirant this is a 2 to cast 1-1 one, one that has the ability to place uh person -person counters on your target creature control it goes well that we'll have uh, Bayern trigger at the end of your end step. So we have four copies in the list to make sure that we can be able to have the chances to have this played on the turn two and curve out well with our other creatures that can also benefit from these transparent counters and at the same time having them uh, bigger damage and uh, be greater ahead in your board. So next to support this and to hinder any spell shenanigans is that we have a copy of Aliyah, Guardian, Traven. So this is a 2 to cast 2 1 again. Uh, well, uh, first strike with Dunkitcher spells having to cast one more to cast. So this is basically protecting us from spot removals, mass removals, and other non creature shenanigans that is done by your opponent. So, and also in the support of this, in which we have uh, a 3 drop, is uh, 3 copies of our Brutal Qatar, just basically removing a threat from your opponent, exiling a creature, and also at the same time, you can have this bonus if we be able to flip this in night into a Moonrage Brute. And at the same time, having this trigger again once it uh, goes back or transforms back into Brutal Qatar. So, with that, the uh, 3 drop is more of here the aggressive part of our 3 drop card is basically Shatter Skull Charger. So, this is a 3 to cast 4 3, Kicker 2, Trample Haste. So if it was kick, it renders the battlefield with a personal sun counter on it. So at the beginning of end step, if it doesn't have a personal sun counter on it, uh, return it to the rose hand. So the only drawback here is that you would have had to place a personal sun counter on this creature. But the bonus is that you can have several ways to place that one. Example is uh, the aspirant, of course, and we also have command of faces kakasan and the flip version of this card, uh, light shared array. Um, the only uh, drawback, maybe, aside from that, is that if there are instances that you may need to kick this one, so you have to pay uh, four, uh, five mana in total, that's extra two mana to be able to have this one as a 5 4 trampler haste. But at the minimum, we have several ways to, of course, uh, have this one as a 5 4 4 3 with a bonus person uh, counter added on it, and at the same time, it won't be having to return to its uh, owner's hand. So that is four copies in the deck, and the support of this is this card, Moldarian Trail Seeker, that is also a 3-drop and 1-1 one, one with a backup ability to have a place uh, 2 plus some counters and another creature control, and having to copy this ability until the end of turn. So if this place also on this creature, you want to have this one to pay one colorless, sacrifice it to deal damage equal to its power to any target. That's basically killing them off uh, in the instance that you would have uh, 
the alpha strike uh, damage to be able to give their life total to zero. Now for our next card, which are the non-creature spells, uh, we have first the battle, which is the invasion of Gobakan. So it appears here that you can just pay two uh, invasion but the one is the battlefield and the uh, target opponent reveals uh, his or her hand and you may exile a non-added card that is as long as it remains exiled its owner may play it for an additional two mana to cast so that's only in a way to ju just uh, delay their best cards as you curb other creatures at the same time you would be able to attack this one and then flip it into a discard a light shield array so this card would also in a way place a special person counters on each creature that attack this turn at the beginning of your end step and as also a way to protect out creatures by sacrificing this one creatures you control gain hex probe and indestructible so basically a very powerful card that fits well in this deck that can also help uh, attain the ability or the objective to have uh, person person counters uh, triggered on each of your uh, creatures so with that, we also have Command of Faces Kakasan, that's pretty much a basic uh, ability that, uh, that plays some, some counters on the next creature spell and also have this one become an Etching of Kumano, which is also a 2-2 creature with haste and its ability that the uh, creature that damage is turned by a source you control will die exhaled instead. So any die trigger shenanigans would be hindered by this uh, creature, uh, legendary uh, enchantment creature, Human Shaman. Now for the only instance in the deck, wherein we only have uh, four play with fires that can just a cheap spot removal and also can curb out our draws with a scry and a lone copy of spikes field hazard to also help out with a land drop and also at the same time as a bonus one damage if needed for any target now for the lands pretty much basic with uh, just uh, pain lands for the fix several uh, man lands the, then of the bugbear uh, channel lands you can use the vampire and also this uh, check lands advantage basic lands also the pathways are also available here as well as the sacred foundry playset and last not the least the, the red uh, channel land second and crucible of defiance now for the cyber plan let's uh, check on what are the line up on this so pretty much of a typical deck in a pioneer format scenario we used to have this uh, one to cast the uh, uncontrollable spells or basically want to cast uh, spot removers as we may say so just basically they can kill off a target that is white or blue creature this is really aimed for the spirits uh, matchup wherein they have several ways to counter spells so just this one this would be really a cheap spot removal at the same time would really kill off their good creature and also work well against humans so we make sure that we have three copies in the deck we have two copies of containment splits though this one would also just go with this ability that an untoken creature would enter the battlefield it wasn't cast as it instead so this would uh, literally stop those cards that are uh, so the effects of uh, court of calling or that of the collective company effects that can cheat out teachers from the top of the library so containment priest will basically exile them instead also for uh, graveyard shenanigans we have two copies of present peace uh, that's basically replacing them uh, at the same time it enters the battlefield uh, with exile all of their cards from graveyards and it would uh, a card or token we put in the graveyard from anywhere exile it instead so that is a good replacement effect trigger that also cover up uh, any graveyard shenanigans or dice trigger from your opponent in addition against basically for spells uh, deck such as uh, Blue Red Phoenix, we have uh, Talia Guardian of Traven to help us out to be able to tax them early so that they won't be able to do some nonsense or any shenanigans from their decks that would really hinder us to uh, aggro them out early on. And also, we have two copies of Archon of Emeria. This one is just a sort of be fill in uh, support creature that's just, just basically disrupting. Uh, 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 matchups wherein players can cast more than one spell each turn and then basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tab so this will be really annoying in terms of three color decks that can uh, have uh, several non-basic lands that can just comes to play top instead of that one and last but not the least is a copy of Raiden Mugado the Worthy it is also dealing with uh, snow lands your opponent's control and also non creature spells your opponent's would cast with mana value 4 or greater would cost 2 more to cast and also it's a good flyer with vigilance in this aspect and also you can also have an option to cast this one for bulk mira protector shield if a source opponent controls would deal damage to your permanent control prevented damage and then it would also 
counter that spell or ability that targets a uh, you or a permanent you control unless they pay one and also another card for the mid-range and control matchup is three copies of showdown skulls so this saga would be really, really providing you with gas at the same time having putting some encounters which is also again our main objective on this deck whenever you cast a spell so you can put up some counter on the creature control as well as the, those ones that are casted from your excel cards that was escaled from the first uh, lore counter trigger and also we have a copy of seal seraph just a basic uh, 3 to class 3 3 prototype for probably for the ability to have some several combat uh, advantage to your creatures by giving them legendary lands, uh, lifelink or flying depending on uh, situations uh, and your matchups so that's basically it for the sideboard uh, card uh, uh, in outs in a uh, match up uh, discussion we now have the mana curve with a very value of 1.84 surprisingly because of this total of several 13 for 2 mana value and 15 for 1 so pretty much very aggressive start but uh, I'm not sure why we still have 23 lands in this I might even consider to have 22 lands and add more spot bars or maybe some burn spells on this so that we'll be able to go uh, wide and maybe just reach out to your opponents with a burn spell to end uh, the life total okay but that the list is a uh, red uh, 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 vision uh 25 for red and uh, 18 for white but uh, surprisingly the producers are pretty much even on this as we go this uh, car, uh, land support for the land of the basics and our tokens that we use are government tokens soldier tokens and spirit tokens as uh, respectively that's i guess that's uh, about it for this if you have seen this uh matchup on your mgo or mg arena gameplay in explorer just let me know in the comments below what were your observations against this deck or maybe if you are playing this one already let's uh, let us have a good discussion on the card choices and maybe you can also share your version of this deck archetype that we can have uh, to uh, elaborate and maybe have a uh, analysis on how it would be more fair and efficient in most of the format uh, matchups in Pioneer. So I guess that's about it guys. Thank you for watching this video. Boss Agro again for the Pioneer format with your suggestion the uh, deck list. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, notification bell for uh, instant updates of this uh, kind of content, this deck discussions and of course some other uh, future decks that we can rebuild as uh, new sets are rebuilt. Are uh, explored in the presented in the Magic the Gathering standard and also in Pioneer format. Thank you again, guys, for watching and see you in the next video.